Right, so you've decided now that you want to go to a park with your dogs. You drive off and you arrive at the park. You park your car and now you need to get your dogs out of that car. What I get so angry about is these people that open the door and the dogs race out into the park. They can make a nuisance by racing up to other dogs, running up to people or children, but generally getting out of that car in a high state and racing off into the park. You need to get to that park, open the door, put on a lead or have your dogs under control, take them out of the car calmly and quietly. If it's an enclosed park, you walk them in calmly, then you can take the leads off. If it's not an enclosed park, you still should take them out of the car, walk a little way into the park area and then if you're going to take your dogs off lead take them off lead there. It is also very dangerous to allow your dogs to race out of the car. I can't tell you how many times I've seen dogs racing around a car park and a car is driving in that dog nearly gets knocked over. Take your dogs out of the car calmly and quietly and walk into the park. There is another situation that I've seen in parks where the owner parks, let the dogs out and sits and waits. The dogs race around, can cause a nuisance, do their own thing and finally come back to the owner who's been sitting in the car the whole time. They get in and they go home. That to me is the laziest way of walking your dogs that you could think of. Also, those dogs are not under control. Their owner is sitting in the car and many times those are the dogs that cause the problems. So don't do it. Be a responsible owner, get your dogs out of the car properly, take them into the park. Now when you're in the park, you need to know that this park doesn't belong to you and exclusively to you. There are other users of a park. There are other owners with their dogs. There are mothers with children, families with children. There are cyclists, and I'm not going to talk to you about cyclists that come herring down and nearly knock you over. But basically, the park belongs to everyone. Therefore, you have to respect that everybody has a right to be in that park. So don't assume that you own the park and your dog can do what it likes. You need to follow the rules and if there are rules up and it says your dog has to be on a lead or whatever, then I think you need to follow those rules. But there are many parks that do allow your dogs to be off lead and that's great. But remember, there are people that don't have dogs walking through that park and they don't want your dog racing up to them, jumping on them, knocking them over if they're a child that is not acceptable in a park. So you have to be respectful of all the occupants of that, of that park. And if you know that your dog is going to chase bicycles, be careful of that, be observant, and ensure that your dog is under control if a bicycle is going to come tearing past you. And just for those of you who ride bicycles, could you be equally um, kind to the people who are walking with dogs and if you are going to race past them coming up from behind, warn people. Hello, coming through, watch your dogs. Because I have been scared out of my wits by a bicycle that comes tearing past me. And then my dog gets a fright. And many times this is what causes dogs to chase bicycles. So people on bicycles, be aware of people on dogs. Dogs, people with dogs, people with dogs, be aware of cyclists and particularly people who don't have dogs who are enjoying the park and don't want to be annoyed by a dog running up to them. What do you need to take when you're in the park? The first thing you need to take is bags to clean up after your dog. Nothing annoys me more than going to a park and see people walking around, the dog does a mess and they walk on. Be responsible, pick up after your dog. 
It's not somebody else's duty or you wait until it rains. What about all those times, those months when it doesn't rain and now you've got a build-up of all this revolting mess around a park? Pick up after your dog. It is your duty as a dog owner, a responsible dog owner. Take bags with you to pick up. Second thing you need to take is treats. High value treats so that when a dog comes to you, you've called, you said, come, come, come. Dog comes, it gets a reward for coming. The dogs must know that coming to you is rewarding. So you take the most delicious treats you can think of that the dog's going to go, whoa, I want to get to my owner. And you take those with you in a treat bag or in your pockets. And when the dog comes and was doing something right, boom, it gets a treat. Reward, reward, reward. The dogs are less likely going to be misbehaving because they want to get that reward. Finally, you need to take a lead with you when you start walking in that park. I can't tell you the number of people that go into walk uh, to a park without a lead. They then have no control over their dog and they cannot get it back under control or put it on a lead. It is your duty to be able to put your dog on a lead when necessary. So whether you've got one dog or seven dogs, you need to have some leads available that you can put the dog on the lead when it has to be put on a lead. If they have a harness, you can, they can wear the harness all the time and you can attach a lead. If they've got a collar, but you can attach the lead. Do not walk into a park without a lead. That is not acceptable as far as I'm concerned. You need to be able to put your dog on a lead if the time comes. None of this nonsense of, oh, my dog's under control, it's fine. No, it's not fine. Doesn't matter how well trained a dog is, there comes a time when you might have to put it on a lead. And that's what you need a lead for. So three things. You need to have your treats and you need to have your lead and you need to have your bags. Then you can walk in the park as a responsible pet owner.